All right, so it looks like we've got a, <clears throat> quite a few folks in the chat box. Hello, Shauna from Alaska. Thanks for joining us. And who's that from High Plains? Judy. Nice to see you, Judy. See you. <laughs> Great. And so for those of you that are um, just sitting here waiting for the next minute or so, um, if you want to orient yourself around, you should see that video pod in the top right corner or whatever corner it is in. Um, you can manipulate that. You can make it bigger. You can shrink it. You can switch it so that the video uh, is the big part. I don't know why you would want to do that. Uh, and the PowerPoint is in the top right window where you can keep it how it is. So it is pretty customizable for you all. Um, and there should be uh, a toolbar in the, either at the bottom of your screen or at the top left of your screen. And that's going to have the chat function. It'll also have polls, Q&A, um, and so on and so forth. So those are your main kind of Zoom orientation uh, notes. Hello, Barb. And I guess with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Zoom is telling me I have a meeting on my phone. So yeah, I guess it's time to get started. Um, <clears throat> welcome to our uh, webinar, Out of This World Engineering. My name is Brooks Mitchell. And I'm joined by Kelly and Lacante. Hello. And oh, Annie Holland. <laughs> Annie's helping us out because this is a very hands on, materials intensive webinar today. Uh, we're going to be going over three different activities, well, kind of four, that you could do at your library. Um, in terms of like that are, you know, space and engineering themed programming. So I wanted to start out before we even jump into anything, kind of a fun poll question here. Talking about engineering a lot. And of course, uh, NASA invents a lot of things. Engineers invent things, right? You can see my connection here. Um, so our poll question is, which of the following was not invented by NASA? So three of these things were invented by NASA. One was not. And we'll give you, I don't know, 20 seconds or so. And while we're waiting, is uh, the audio coming in clear, video clear for everybody? Somebody wants to just say, yeah, it sounds good in the chat box. Great. <laughs> hey, Frank from the Lawrence Hall of Science. Glad to have you joining us. All right. So a little more than half have voted. We'll give you three more seconds. Three, two, one, and... in my polling, share the results. Okay, so an overwhelming amount of you said camera phones. And then we have next uh, Velcro, and after that was memory foam and LED lights. So actually I can give you a little bit of intel on each one of these. The correct answer is Velcro. NASA did not invent Velcro. Velcro was invented in 1938 before NASA was a thing. Uh, it was used on NASA missions, of course, uh, a great thing for zero gravity. But a common misconception, Velcro was not invented by NASA. Uh, camera phones, so that was invented in the early 90s at JPL, and you, I guess you could say camera phone. They invented small little um, digital camera style things that are small enough to put on a camera phone. And that technology is now used in over 50% of all camera phones or something like that. I learned some things last night. Um, LED lights, of course, there's a lot of uh, purposes there. Those are invented in the 90s, I believe at JPL too. And then memory foam, I thought this was kind of funny. I thought, oh man, that must be like some very sophisticated landing gear, right? Or um, maybe insulation in the shuttle or something like that. Nope, the astronauts just wanted more comfortable seats. So they made memory foam or they invented memory foam in the 70s. So a little tidbit of information for you there. And that's a great lead in to today, uh, today's discussion about how NASA is full of engineers and it is full of people that invent things. All right. Brooks, we got a couple of people that can't see the poll. Do you oh. need guidance for them? Yeah, so in the very top toolbar, let's see, you're getting the poll over there, right? Um, you should see a little button that says polls in the toolbar, right next to Q&A, right next to participants, and right next to chat. If you click on that, I'm thinking it will come up for you. And I'll wait to see. Can you guys see it? Do you see the poll button? Okay. There's no toolbar. Jill, look in the top 
I, and the, yeah, go ahead. I actually might wonder if you might need to look at the bottom. I think Brooks has his toolbar on the top because he's sharing his screen. Welcome to the new world of Zoom with us. Um, <laughs> so, so check the bottom there of your screen. Yeah. You see a toolbar there? It kind of, if you hover over it, it should pop up for you. Okay, mine hey, is on hey. the bottom, you need to hover. I guess I'm special and mine goes on the top because I'm the host. That's yeah, right. thanks. I needed to hear that. All right. Uh, so again, memory foam or uh, Velcro, excuse me, not invented by NASA. Uh, we'll continue on with our the rest of our webinar. Okay, so today's agenda. It's not up to me. You guys will just bear with us for one moment. I want to make sure you're seeing the same thing that I am. Yeah, give us just one second. We'll get it figured out. Let's see here. Test one, two. Testing one, two. All right. Well, you guys just type in the chat box if it happens again, because we won't we won't know. Yeah. All right. Um, let's try this one. Coming up for you, Gillian. I believe it is. There's today's agenda. Okay. I think I'm not going to touch anything else. I think I've got it all figured out. Use that term loosely. It's um, doing at work. Yeah. <laughs> you can check the chat box to make sure that it's actually coming up. So today's agenda: <laughs> introduction and reminders. We're going to be doing a hands-on activity: soda straw rockets. Uh, our second hands-on activity is going to uh, be Mars engineering. We're going to be creating a Mars rover. And our third hands-on activity is a classic egg drop uh, with a little bit of a NASA twist to it. If we have time, we'll do a Q&A with me and Kellyanne as well. Let's see. I can okay. see the new slide and hear you too. Okay, I'm just very paranoid now. Um, so we want you, of course, to join StarNet. Uh, we kind of always are talking about StarNet, but it is the online community for library staff, um, for professional development resources. Uh, you can sign up, you can get blogs, forums, videos, and I think I have more slides directly about that. Yes, the STEM Activity Clearinghouse is a part of StarNet Libraries, and that is our go-to, well, a clearinghouse of STEM activities. Um, and there's about 175 plus vetted activities that we've curated or collected from across the web from a vetted reliable website. So as you're kind of approaching your programming and you're thinking, you know, is this activity from Pinterest really scientifically sound? Uh, am I going to be teaching something that's incorrect? Um, go and check out the STEM Activity Clearinghouse because these activities are specifically designed for librarians and in the library setting. Plus, they're free. Okay, so some upcoming conferences. Uh, we will be at the Association of Science and Tech Centers uh, in late September to early October. Kellyanne? 
That'll be you, right? Yeah, we'll have, we'll have some sessions there and we'll be uh, shouting out to the world how great libraries are and encouraging museums to partner. Yes. Uh, and then at the end of the month on Halloween, um, I will be at the New Mexico Library Association Conference. I'm just doing a uh, five hour, six hour pre-conference session uh, the day before. Um, so if anybody out there is going to attend the New Mexico Library Association Conference, um, please do make plans to come to that um, October 31st pre-conference session. It's going to be all about uh, STEM activities in the context of summer 2019 and the Universal Stories summer reading theme. So it'll be a lot of fun. And then Andy and I will be at Yalsa in Salt Lake City uh, in early November. Uh, I think we're doing a community dialogue session. Is that correct? That's right. Okay. <laughs> so we got a lot of fun uh, places that we're going to be. If any of you guys are at any of those upcoming conferences just throw it in the chat box we'd love to mm -hmm. make plans to meet up and talk to them definitely okay and i put this slide in here as we are thinking about 2019 summer reading themes now is the time to start reaching out to some uh local community partners uh, i'm not going to spend a ton of time on this but the night sky network is uh and the solar system ambassadors that i'm going to talk about next or show a slide for next are uh, two groups that are coordinated through nasa that can come and help you with your library programming um, we'll be doing probably some more webinars talking about these two uh, resources, um, but they are vetted, reliable um, people with NASA connections or local astronomy clubs that can come and help you do star parties. They can come help you um, do astronomy programs. Really great resources. Yes, yeah, so Solar System Ambassadors is the second one. Um, and Greg, will you go ahead and put that link bank in the chat box? I'm not sure if you have already. Um, we have a link bank with, just because it's, you know, instead of throwing all this stuff at you and you're not able to write down the, the URLs in time, um, the link bank will kind of direct you to all these websites and resources too. And because we're talking about engineering, I wanted to include uh, a shout out to our friends at the American Society of Civil Engineers. They are great partners too. Uh, we have a project that we work closely with them on, but if you want to partner with an ASCE branch, um, contact outreach at ASCE.org. Um, and, you know, maybe having a real life engineer at your engineering program to talk to the kids about how cool their job is. Um, and how they clean water or build bridges or something like that uh, can be really, really impactful. So that is definitely worth uh, reaching out and trying to form partnerships with. And because I just talked about a lot of stuff, you can screenshot that or um, yeah, save that. I'll give you a few seconds if you need to. It's usually what we do at conferences so people aren't furiously writing things down. Just take a screenshot. All right. So talking about 2019 and talking about the universe of stories, um, I'm sure you all are very excited or you're like, oh my gosh, we're thinking about summer reading already. This is crazy. Uh, but we want to be, uh, Starnet wants to be like one of your go-to resources for that summer reading theme. We're going to be doing a lot of different things. Um, and towards the end of the month, um, that week of October 22nd, we haven't set a firm date yet, but we're going to be doing kind of a kickoff webinar. We're going to talk about some of those resources and introduce the topic a little bit. Uh, and that's going to be one of a few different webinars that we're going to be doing about the universe of stories, or as I spelled it here, the universe or stories. Um, and so there will be more hands-on activities that we'll be focusing on. And again, we want you to look at us as like, you know, that's a good, vetted, reliable resource to go and get uh, um, information about the universe of stories. Uh, and I put that clearinghouse collection. So that's going to be a specific button you can click on the clearinghouse. That's going to be all space science activities uh, that we think would be really good for your summer programming. All right, and I just want to remind you, International Observe the Moon Night, we just did a webinar about this um, earlier in the month with Vivian White. It was great, um, and it is coming up. So if you're like last minute scrambling for some programming, um, October 20th is International Observe the Moon Night. You can see those resources there. They're also going to be in the link bank um, that Greg puts in the chat box. Um, so yeah, you can go back and you check the webinar for programming ideas. There's a poster to download. Um, and you can register your program to be on the NASA map and be, you know, have an official International Observe the Moon Night poster. Okay, Whew. got through the introduction. Now we are ready to turn our focus uh, to today's topic. So engineers in space, space engineering, out of this world engineering, however you want to think about it. Uh, this topic came to me, I was actually talking to a friend of mine and I was telling them, you know, we work on a NASA project. It's really cool. I do education. And they said, wait, hold up. I thought NASA was just a bunch of rocket scientists. Now we all know that that is not true, right? Only rocket scientists work at NASA. That's not true. So uh, I found this list of potential like uh, undergraduate degrees that you might have if you want to work at NASA. And Kelly, and check this out. What word do you see in this list of degrees more than any other word? Hmm, I see, I see engineering, if I'm not mistaken. 
you really hit that out of the park. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so we didn't practice. We didn't. NASA hires a ton of engineers. Uh, I mean, that's pretty obvious. If you know anything about engineering, you know that, of course, that's going to fit well into that, um, you know, aerospace field. Um, so I don't need to spend too much time making connections for you all about how engineers are important for space travel. But I do want to show you a video um, from NASA. And this is, let's see, Greg, if you want to put the link in the chat box, if it's coming up choppy for you, maybe you don't have the best internet connection or we don't, um, you can just go to the YouTube video and watch it there. So I'll go ahead and play it. It's about a minute long. Let me optimize sharing for full screen and see if it works. There's a problem that I need to solve and it's something that not that many people are working on. And that's the motivation that allows me to get up and say, I'm going to go into work today with a smile on my face. My name is Rubik Sheth and I work on car radiators, but for spacecrafts. <laughs> Thermal control is core to any space vehicle. Without that, our crew wouldn't survive even a second. When Orion, let's say, when the multi-purpose crew vehicle orbits the moon, it's going to see these environments that are extremely warm. We are given the task of, hey, go design these heat exchangers, and then as the vehicle is getting hot or cool, it could store or reject energy into that phase change material. So this was our proving ground, if you will, and we're actually operating our PCM heat exchanger on orbit on the ISS from our own lab. This is actually our process flow loop. You know on a daily basis what you're doing is revolutionary. The technologies that we work on here are going to enable us to go farther. It's our own hardware in space. It's just, it's so awesome, right? It's, it's, it's motivating. <laughs> Not sure if you guys got sound on that. Um, but anyway, that's just like an example of a uh, really quick video that you could show to inspire your audience to show them, um, you know, what, let's see, uh, to show them um, a, an example of a real life engineer in action and somebody working for NASA. I just wanna make sure I'm not double sharing right now. Can you guys see? Can you guys all see the, the PowerPoint on the screen? Okay, great. So I, okay, awesome. I was just making sure I wasn't sharing my screen share. It all gets very meta and confusing. Um, so I wanted to show this graphic of the engineering design process. Um, we talk a lot about the scientific method and everybody knows the scientific method. Uh, the engineering design process uh, is a little bit different and it's a little bit more, you, know, you see different examples of it, but this is the one that we kind of came up with and the one that we stick with. So thinking, of course, you're going to want to plan uh, when you're doing an engineering project. Build, of course, you're gonna construct your thing. Uh, test. So whether that's prototyping, whether that's testing in action, you need to test. But the most important aspect of this engineering design process that I want to talk about is the do it again. Um, so when you do an engineering um, activity with your patrons, you really want to make sure you give enough time for them to test it, see what they can improve, and uh, retest. So whenever I've worked with patrons, uh, and we even do a simple little tiny engineering thing, if you don't give them enough time to to improve upon their design, then they can get you know frustrated and it's not as much fun as if you're you're learning and you're evaluating what you did and what you did wrong. Um, so that is the engineering design process. I would just say, if you're gonna do an engineering activity with your patrons, make sure to give them enough time to test and do it again. Uh, also, this is the engineering design process, but we're talking about space today. So we're gonna talk about the engineering design process in space. And Greg, thank you for creating that wonderful graphic. It's better than the one I created in Microsoft Paint. Okay. So um, in the chat box, we're going to start things out today. We're going to do our soda straw rockets activity, but we're going to like simplify it a little bit. How are we doing on time? Uh, we want to, yes, Annie, if you will go retrieve for us. Um, what is the simplest engineering activity you could do at your library with just a single piece of paper for your patrons? Uh, and you can put it in the chat box. And if you um, don't know the answer, then that's fine. We can, well, I'll just tell you anyway. A paper airplane, that's right. Okay, so Kelly and I, uh, we're gonna just real quick as a lead into this activity, we're gonna do a paper airplane. Um, and let's see, do you have any, I have our two pieces of paper right here, Kelly Ann. I think I can hear Annie as she walks down. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know how to mute it. <laughs> oh, I no worries. I think she figured it out. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. Have you made paper airplanes in the past, Kellyanne? 
It's been a while. It's been a while. This okay. will be a great refresher for me. Anybody have any tips? Yeah. See somebody says make something that flies. Oh, I don't know if that's a tip or an answer to my question. Oh, that's a good one too, Mary. Fold your paper to be able to hold a book. Yeah. Nice. Okay, I'm just gonna go pretty standard. I think I'm gonna make my wings more narrow and long. Okay. I don't know if it's windy outside. So today. It is. Thank you, Annie. That'll be extra fun for yeah. us. Today, uh, I personally am a very competitive person, Kellyanne. Are you a competitive person? I am not a competitive person. Okay, different people respond to different things. Um, and I feel like, oh, what am I doing here? This is not a good paper airplane. Um, I feel like I would tend to resort to being competitive uh, in an engineering activity. Like I want to get mine farther than yours or I want to make mine better than yours. But today I say that we work in the spirit of collaboration. I'm all for that. Okay, so instead of being competitive, let's um, try to help each other and collaborate because engineering and science itself is a very collaborative process. Okay, I don't know what I've done here. This is not a real good paper airplane. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm not sure about mine either. <laughs> eight-year-old Brooks would be very, very disappointed. I know. Yeah. My eight-year-old Killian would also be like, what did you forget? Hey, it's all part of the process. So. That's right. I think this is one of those activities where kids are better than a grown-up. Yeah. But I'm ready. I'm okay. ready to give this a, a try, Brooks. I'm going to see if I can... Uh, Let's see here. If I can get my video going on uh, my phone. Okay. You guys will just bear with me for one second. Let's see, Annie, do you have your video down there? Hey! Okay, we're gonna have to, I can't pull mine up on uh, my phone, so we're gonna rely on your video. All right, we didn't do a good job. These aren't gonna work very well, but. Um... What do you think? Oh, a helicopter. That would be fun, Gail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was not very good. But of course, it is a learning uh, redesign right. process. So let me get my slides back up here. Um, we are now going to spice things up. We're going to kick it up a notch um, in rural style. And we are going to do our NASA connection. Uh, so. Let's see here. We've done our paper airplanes. We've messed around with our PowerPoints. <laughs> and now we are going to do our soda straw rocket. So this is an activity um, from NASA uh, in which you use just paper. Uh, you have a little rocket template that you can see up there. Scissors, tape, and straw. So very, very simple. And you're making a rocket that can be launched from a soda straw. So it's relatively easy. It's not too much of a challenge, but the challenge comes when you ask your patrons to modify it um, to see how that might impact the rocket performance. Okay. Oh, you got the Elmo cam up? We've got close up view here. For okay. You. So you want to show, this is the rocket I made beforehand. And this is, I am not the craftiest person, um, but this is kind of the standard design, right? So it will fit right on the end of my straw. Sorry, Brooke, I'm not seeing the Elmo. I'm not sure if everyone else is. Okay. Let's see. She can see. Okay. Yeah, it might just be you, Annie. Sorry. Sorry if anybody else is on mobile. Yeah. So we have our um, sort of straw rockets right here. So, uh, Kellyanne, let's each make one. 
and maybe I'll change mine. I'll do my fins a little bit lower on the rocket. And if you want to do your fins higher, just to kind of modify it and see, and then we'll go test them out. Let's do it. All right. Um, so yeah, you can kind of, it's a little bit more difficult, but you really just want to wrap this. I would suggest using a pen or a pencil as a template and you would wrap this around. Okay. And kind of roll it up, make a tube. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. And once you have that tube, go ahead and just tape it a little bit. Now we talked about maybe changing up the weights too, right? We did. So do you want to do, I'll do this light one with just this kind of tape. And then do you want to use this fancy heavier duct I'll tape? I'll use this fancy okay. heavy duct tape. We're just going to do some variables here. And if anybody's ever done so to straw rockets, um, you go ahead and put it in the check box. Let us know if you had success with it or if it was kind of a difficult activity. All right, so I have my little tube here. All right, maybe I'll. It's taking a lot for me not to be competitive about this. But it's, it's working so well for you. Thank you, thank you. Um, and then so for the nose, you can do a few different things. You could add a different nose on. Um, the instructions really suggest just to kind of um, model the nose or, I hate to say squish up the nose, uh, but just kind of bend it based on the top of um, your pencil or your pen. Kind of make, make your own little nose there. Okay. Oops. Hey Deborah, thanks for joining us. And there, and this will be recorded, y'all. So if you're, um, you have to run away for a second and go man the circulation desk or something, we will have a recorded version of this. Okay. Now this is where I found the most difficulty is like getting these tiny little. Uh, fins on and you want to sandwich the fins. So you just want to use a little bit of tape or maybe glue would be good in this situation. Are you done with yours already? Hot dog. Well, not to be competitive, Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Luna, that's a great point that this is something that then everybody has something they've got as a kind of a memento. When they yeah, exactly. And you could definitely encourage people decorating it and everything like that. Um, and yes, Luna, I think the technical troubles are half the fun, right? <laughs> if it were perfect, it would, would just wouldn't be worth doing. I know. Okay. Here's mine, Kellyanne. I put oh, the fins yeah, pretty low. Good. I did mine a little higher. Okay. And then of course I used a, a heavier tape. We were just curious to see what happened with a different weight. Mine's going to be a little, quite a bit heavier just because of that duct tape. Yeah, let me ooh, that? carry a heavy payload. Yeah. All right. You want to go test them? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Annie, do you want to turn your video back on? Sweet. <laughs> Okay, first we are going to do the original social program. Okay, so let's see what the feedback is here. I like to do soda straw rockets in conjunction with stomp rockets. Yeah, that would be a really nice. awesome day. Let me know whenever you do that program, I'll come out for it. <laughs> and the most trouble gives the best reward. I guess that's talking about webinar software. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, awesome. Well, that's a cool STEM activity. I think uh, any kid's gonna 
he really relate to that idea of, of aerodynamics and making a straw rocket. And, right. you know, you can, it can appeal to some that aren't interested in STEM by just saying, hey, come make paper airplanes. And it can appeal to those that are interested in STEM by phrasing it as an aeronautics experiment, maybe. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to move on um, to another activity. This one's called Mars Engineering. And so the premise with this is that we're making a rover. So uh, we're going to use construction materials um, to make a rover. Which one went further? Uh, the one that I made with the, not being competitive, but um, with the fins on the very, very end of the farthest. So Mars Engineering, um, again, is going to be uh, an activity where you're creating a rover. The rover needs to be able to move and it needs to be able to pick up a rock, okay? So much like um, on board the Curiosity rover, right? It's moving around, it's picking up samples. Um, and if you're doing this activity uh, at your library, there's a ton of great resources that um, you can tie in and talking about the Curiosity rover and why it has so many different instruments on it, what those instruments do. Um, or if you're not comfortable with that content, you can just you know find a good NASA video to show and then lead right into the activity. So how much you wanna tie it in um, to the specific examples of the Curiosity rover or any rover um, is up to you. Um, and so what I really like about this and actually our next activity too, Kellyanne, is that it uses all recycled materials. So all day yesterday I was working and I was like, oh, I gotta go to the store, I gotta get materials, I gotta get materials. And when I finally sat down and made my materials list, it was all things we have you know, here at SSI. Uh, and I imagine probably at your library too. So uh, the only things that you really need that's gonna be mandatory, you need three rocks. So that's basically just to pick up um, your samples. You need tape, you need some scissors, markers, glue, and I put foil on there, but you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know if you really, you could get away with it if you didn't have foil. Mm. Um, so those are the only things that you really need. Besides that, um, you're just gonna need construction materials for making your rovers. Mm -hmm. uh, so what did I, I'll go ahead and grab our stuff over here. And what, while you're doing that, Brooks, just yeah. to let you all know, the, this is a list of suggested items. It's very fun if you can put out a bunch of different stuff and have the kids just pick and choose and use what, whatever you can, I mean, you just add to this. So you don't feel like you have to get all of these things. They're just things that work well. A very loose suggestion. Very loose, but you know, it's one of those things where if you put it out there, the kids will use it and they'll be super fun if you give them some options. All right, so I'm just kind of randomly grabbing some stuff here. Excellent. I've got some aluminum foil. I don't know if we'll use that. Um, some Chanel sticks, uh, rubber bands, straws, some like uh, twine and then some corks that I got from home, definitely not from wine bottles. Uh, and I have some skewers here. You could use pencils, you could use anything like that. And then I did this last week too, I think I'm so clever. Instead of getting just regular terrestrial rocks, I got meteorites for us to pick up, so. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so Kellyanne, I'm thinking we're gonna collaborate on this. Andy, we would love your, your help and your ideas. Um, we need to be able to pick up a rock. I thought this would be a good body. That so why don't I work on the wheels, and then do you want to work on the lifting mechanism? The scoop. I'm okay. going to go look for materials for the scoop. Okay. I'll make a flag. Yeah. See. <laughs> <laughs> we have our. Oh, okay, great. You have. So I'm thinking, and I've learned this from another activity. If I use this as the body. I'm going to need a uh, chassis, the word I learned from a librarian, um, underneath. And of course you could change, I reckon, the design challenge or the goal on this, and you could have them building any type of rover to do to accomplish anything. I just like this idea of picking up rocks, you know. Oh, that's good. Excellent. Do you want the duct tape? Is that what you need? No, okay. Never mind. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what the flag looks like. Does anyone have any ideas for us as we're designing our, our scoop and our our wheels here. Yeah, and again, the premise is we need to be able to pick up a rock and move it. Maybe I should try my scoop out before I attach it to anything. It's probably a good idea. Do some initial prototyping. I'll do some initial prototyping. Yeah. Yeah, and you all can, can watch. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see now. 
I guess if I'm a rover, I probably don't have a hand to scoop it up. No, but I was thinking we could set a little, um, like a slit right here. And uh -huh. so you could control, use oh, one of these or use a Chanel stick and control yeah. like, and, from this end. Yes, and just pull it in, right? I don't have to scoop it up. I can just scoop it yeah, in. Sure, for the purpose of our time today. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. <laughs> or you could. Oh, do tell. I'm just collaborating here. Oh, yes. You could. Um, I think you're being competitive. Cut like a little, uh, let's say you could cut like a notch in there or something mm -hmm. so that I could pick it up easier. But ah, I don't know. I, I, shall, I shall work on a flap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So you can see I have my body here. I have my two um, straws that I'm using as a chassis. Let's see if that'll go in. Yeah. Watch out for flying projectiles. <laughs> Your safety goggles. Yeah. I'm thinking. Think of these corks, you could just probably stick them on there, right? Yeah. Or even need a, need a hubcap. Force it on there. Yeah. Okay, we're going to test it again here. It looks like a puppet. Oh, it does. <laughs> it's got a face on it. <laughs> All right. So if I can pick it up. Hmm. It's not quite heavy enough. I don't know, Ann, what do you think? Do you what have if you ideas? folded up stuff tape on the outside to make it a little stickier to pull it in? Ooh, to the, grab the rocks? Right, like some of the rovers have the dust collector plate. Oh, yeah. yeah. I like it. Nice analogy. <laughs> All right. There's a flag going over there, Annie. Oh, it's ready. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Very patriotic of you. Yeah, ready. but that, you know, the, all these activities, it is important to try and uh, to make them appeal to everybody. And we'll talk just a minute about um, ways to engage uh, girls in STEM. Um, Kelly, you'll be talking about that. I don't know if I told you uh, ahead of time. You did. Okay. <laughs> But um, yeah, adding art uh, is an element that might, uh, a patron that might not normally be interested in STEM, if you give it under the guise of like, oh, you can create a rover and then you can really decorate it and, you know, put your own flavor on it, that might be a good entry point. Glitter rovers. Glitter rovers, yep. That's what I do. Why not? All right, I think I'm ready for your thoughts on attachment point, whenever you have a good, good time. Okay. Now it talks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see here. Yeah, what do you guys think? Let's see if that'll move. Hey, not so bad. Okay, attachment nice. point. Um, yeah, what do you think? So we've got so far. Oh, nice. Um, I would say maybe on the side? No, not on the side. How about on the front? Because there's not okay. enough. Yeah. I wonder if I get a distraction. Oh, look, I've got a rock already. How many? And Anne's got the flag over here. <laughs> Isn't it pretty? Look at that. All right, what do you think, Brooks? Should I just kind of weave it into this, this section over here? Yeah, I trust you. Um, There's a hole over there. <laughs> <laughs> you make one? Yeah, I'm for it. Okay. Uh, I also have a pen. Yeah, a pen would work we're better. Finding, we're finding a need for some sharp tools over here. Uh-huh. We're almost there. All right. I'm the kind of person that would get way too into this and forget that I'm on a webinar right now and just. <laughs> that would never happen. No. Can you hold it right here? All right, what do you think? 
I think it's got a lot of character. Yeah. That sounds like your nice word. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, everybody. Oh, what nice. Do you think? Okay. I think I might need to make it a little longer, though. Do you want to? Do you want to? Do you have any other uh, suggestions here, Brooks? Huh? Um. If we could find a way to stick this like secure this funnel more uh -huh. to it. And that way we could, oh, I'm to go, yeah, you're like you said, like a little bit longer. Let's do that. Yeah. Or I didn't say anything about not using adhesives. So we could just put some really fresh tape on there. There you go. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> All right, everyone, we have a rover. I don't know if this guy's going to get funded or anything, but. Uh, well, you know, you never know until you try. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. It's moving, so it meets that criteria. And let's see if we can get it to. <laughs> How many degrees are in this room right now? <laughs> All right. And nobody saw that. And wow! <laughs> Good job. That was a great collaboration. Yeah. I think we might need to revise that slightly Ooh. to make it better. I think so. I think if we had time, though, we could sit here and we could test and we could redesign and come sure up with could. some. I gave you the harder part, too, by the way. Oh, well, you know. Yeah. I, I'm here I'm here to help. <laughs> so so you might want to, as you're you're looking at our, our, oh, the scooping. We didn't properly film the scooping, Brooks. <laughs> we, it's okay. You didn't want to see the scooping. We, we, we used some Hollywood anyway. magic. It's, um, <laughs> There's some lovely tape here. That's the main <laughs> main way for this to happen. Mm -hmm. It just kind of looks like a Muppet. I think we're going to have to revise, though, everybody. <laughs> and have some persistence, which yeah. brings us to our points about helping girls, in particular, feel like they're part of this effort. Um, and, of course, anything that you're doing to, to encourage girls can also be helping boys. It's not We're not trying to single out a gender here, but just think about how to frame things so that it's really open and inviting for people who don't normally come to your STEM programs if you're having such a challenge. And uh, what we were doing with this in terms of the activity, it's looking at a purpose. So it's very much looking at why would you make a rover, not just, hey, cool, I made a rover, but you need to make the rover so that you can go find your, your samples on Mars and you can collect that and learn something about the planet. You can do things like that. Um, you can also make sure you go through that engineering design process so that it's, um, you're giving that message, that very subtle message that it isn't about whether you did it perfectly, but Wow, you really persisted, and you kept you kept going with that. And look how much your design changed. That 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 it can be corrected. You don't have to walk into an, a program with the perfect rover, because certainly we didn't, and we were do knew we were doing this today. <laughs> but we gave it a good shot, and we know we we could go back and and make some revisions again. As you're thinking about programs like this, please do think about how you might connect with role models that are um, happen to be women. Um, so it. And I invite Judy, if you've got any comments about your own efforts in working with, um, with engineers and including uh, the presence of women in that, um, in that effort as well, um, I'd love to hear your thoughts and see what that's been doing for your programs. And anyone else, if you've had any successful um, STEM role models that are women, to just show that. And again, just open it up and make it more inviting. Wonderful. Thank you, Kellyanne. Um, and this is... I'm going to show a quick video, um, and I'm not going to show this whole thing, but again, this is an idea of bringing in, in, bringing in an engineer that your patrons might be able to connect with, that they might be able to think, oh, that person's like me, and I might be able to do something like this um, later. Uh, and this is a materials engineer out of Huntsville, Alabama at the Marshall Flight Center, and I'm just going to show about a minute of this video, um, just kind of as a lead-in, again, for uh, any kind of engineering activity you were doing. I love space. What's there not to like about space? My name is Eric Cordovanez, and I'm a materials lab lead engineer at Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. As a materials lab lead engineer, we test anything that goes into space, we verify it. 
make sure that it's safe to use. The materials and process lab at Marshall Space Flight Center, we pretty much burn, break, tilt, bend any material possible to make sure it's durable. So what we have here is an aluminized mylar. It could be anything from a shield on the International Space Station to any tool that an astronaut would use in space. If we're gonna go to Mars, for instance, it's a six months mission. What happens if something happens on the trip down and you have an accident and something catches on fire? Well, we can't take water with us. So we have to have the right materials and the right chemicals and suppressants so that we're prepared in case of emergency. We can't turn around. We test ahead of time so we have all aspects of the mission covered. Success, failure. <laughs> All right, so kind of a fun um, fun lead into our next activity that we're going to do. Uh, but yeah, again, that can have a huge impact. Just a, a kid seeing that and thinking like, oh, I could totally do that. I live in Huntsville. Uh, I could be a rocket or a materials engineer at some point. Really cool stuff. Um, so we are going to move on to our last activity, extranaut drop. Uh, in the chat box, can you just say if you've done an egg drop at your library before? Um, and I'll say I'll put two links into the link bank for this activity. One is extra not drop, which is what we are doing. And it's the more open-ended activity. Again, I literally grabbed random things that I found, marshmallows, rubber bands, uh, cotton balls, things like that. There's another activity. If you have older patrons or you want to kind of, I don't know, uh, refine this activity a little bit more, it's called soft landing challenge. And it uses specific, um, last time we did an egg drop, the local fire department came with their ladder truck, nice. That sounds fun. Um, uh, sorry, soft landing challenge uses specific materials. I think it's popsicle sticks, rubber bands, and balloons. Mm -hmm. um, so again, that's just a way to kind of define it uh, a little bit more and set some more parameters. So extra not drop though, the idea being that we need to protect those astronauts as they are coming and they are landing uh, back on earth or even if they're landing in a different kind of environment. Um, so what I thought would be best for the webinar today in the spirit of collaboration, I've done two kind of initial little landing capsules, if you will. Um, and Kellyanne, I made one for you. And that's going to be the, we're going to go soft with you and I'm going to go suspension. So I'll show you, see under in the Elmo here, I put some rubber bands here and I thought this would be a really nice suspension to put an egg in. Um, and then you could wrap it up over here. Uh, and then I'm going to refine it from here. And for yours, I just put a whole bunch of cotton balls Excellent. in there. Squishy. Yeah, squishy, right? And so we'll put our eggs in there um and i think we'll just kind of modify from here so perfect. yeah we'll work together perfect. collaborate an adults versus kids challenge that sounds awesome the kids won <laughs> and everybody i want to make sure i saw some folks said that they couldn't see when we were doing the mars rover can we all see the cups in the camera and then kellyanne and i Yes, okay, great. I just want to make sure that there's not some weird setting. Excellent. Okay, so Kelly, I have this suspension setting, right? Yes. And so I'm really hoping that eggs don't fall in. Do you think the eggs might fall in to those cracks? You've got quite a few rubber bands. Should we try it? Yeah, let's try it. Let's put an egg in there. Let's see if it... And let's do it on the table. <laughs> okay. Put it in there? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I was actually going to, so I'm going to let it sit on the rubber bands. <gasps> oh, yeah. I missed that. So let's see if it'll kind of cradle it here. And then, of course, we're going to take it out. Um, oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, I didn't mention that. When you're doing a chat, when it says two, make sure it does all panelists and attendees. Mm -hmm. Andy says, do a good job. I don't want to get splatted. <laughs> Yeah, so again, make sure in the chat box it says two, and we do all attendees so everybody can see your, what I'm sure are hilarious comments. That's right. And for mine, I'm going to just kind of nestle my egg mm -hmm. in there, and then try to put, kind of encase it there. Yeah. See. Okay, Annie, it feels pretty good. <laughs> And then I'm, mine's kind of coming apart here. So I'm going to put one of these. Oh, do you need a, uh, what do you need? Oh, that would be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, this balloons? would be great. I'm going to do a balloon, actually. Oh, yeah. And we've got one more over there if you need it. Okay. It's a little big. So I think I'm going to do one in the bottom. Oh, that'll be nice. Yeah. Like an airbag and a seatbelt. Uh-oh. Just kidding. 
Not that one. Not that one. Uh oh, I think I might need some more cotton. I hear some uh, rattling already. Did you ever do an egg drop when you were a child or a kid? No, not as a child. I don't think I ever did either. Only, only, um, only as a facilitator. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, any suggestions out there? I'm not sure. Um, you probably can't see what we're doing, but we're starting with this idea of cups. Yeah. And I think, I think it'll work. I need to get some more cotton balls, though. Okay. I'm just trying to fit as many as I can in there. Taking a hit. I don't hear any more rattling. So, Kelly, I could use some collaboration right now. Oh, yes, I bet. <laughs> One moment, let me get that at least secure there. All right. So, I need to secure this down, right? Oh, I wouldn't push it down too far. <laughs> Not with our laptops right here, anyway. <laughs> Let's think. Let's see if I can. That's not going to work. Uh, not big enough. Huh? Yeah. More? Yeah, more. And then I think I'll secure it with some duct tape like you did. That looks good. It, it, let me show, tell you all what I'm seeing here. It's got, Brooks has got a nice balloon cushion as like an airbag in there. All right, now some, uh, some of this. Yeah, I think it's good, yeah. So this is what I'm working with over here, guys. Balloon on the bottom, rubber bands on the top. I think you might need another piece here. Okay. We want to have the same material, change the designs or outcomes. So um, I think you were asking a question for somebody else, Shauna. But one thing that I think is a really cool idea, if you have a digital scale, you could limit people on the materials that they use by weight. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you could give them the same materials. You could say it has to be this big or this small. Or you could just um, you know, have everybody weigh out their materials. OK, are you going to use these balloons? Hmm. We have one more. Yeah, was, we have one more. I was more. contemplating making out like a another piece. How much time do we have? Oh, let's give it. Yeah, we'll, we'll set our time zone, uh, time limit here. I'd say it's two fifty one. Let's wrap up and test by two fifty five to give Amy plenty of time to retrieve them and bring them back. That sounds to good. I think I might use a balloon. Yeah, I think I am too. Actually, if you're going to use the balloons, I'll use a coffee filter. Coffee filter. Okay. All right. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've got, come back to the pipe cleaners again here. So I'm thinking about those Apollo uh, era capsules and how they mm -hmm. had to land. Hey, what, did they parachute? They were, they, as they were coming down, yeah, they, they were shooting out rockets to. Uh, they had that big heat shield. Yeah. And then splashed down in the ocean. Oh, when they landed on um, Earth. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess this would be different if we were doing it in a different um, gravity field, right? That's true. <laughs> yeah, it's here's a little different on Mars. <laughs> Just on a good, good warning. <laughs> this is all an elaborate scheme for us to get and throw eggs on Anne. No, I'm just kidding. You better not. No. Okay, so I'm thinking if it lands here, it'll hit that. So maybe mm -hmm. do one. That looks good to me. Oh. I think I should have thought of this first though, because now I'm having trouble getting attached. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, nice. 
sounds very open-ended. Um, I can't see who wrote that, but yeah. Again, and I think that's the most fun is like having the most materials available and giving and giving them the most options. Um, granted, I know materials management is always kind of difficult. Yes. Oh, and here on this slide, I just have a few different ideas. But again, it really is so open-ended and it's kind of whatever you have, you know, if you maybe you just have a few Ziploc bags, you can even blow those up and, and make them uh, kind of um, a cushion. All right, Brooks, I think I'm, I'm ready. ready. Yeah, are you ready? Let's do this. Okay. So everybody gets a parachute model here. And Brooks has the balloon model. I know, I'm really banking on it landing in a good way. So I think if I if yeah. we had more time, I would probably put balloons right here and there too. Yeah, and add some more. Let's yeah. try it. Okay. It's the worst that can happen. Annie, do you want to pull up your uh, camera? Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Bring them back up? Okay. <laughs> so Luna suggests hard boiling your eggs before the program. That's a great idea. Or um, using a uh, plastic egg just kind of as a model, you know, before you use the real thing. So maybe use a hard boiled egg to test uh, or a plastic egg to test and then come back and do it again. Mm -hmm. So um, Morgan, I say, yeah, we should get our results right here. Uh, let me just make our, if you'll bear with me, I'm gonna make our chat box bigger. What am I doing? I can see everybody's questions. And guys, if you have a question, you can put it in the chat, but you might wanna put it in the Q&A um, as well. So Gail says, one year we did it, it was a competition to see which survived the drop. <laughs> the ones that did were then launched from a catapult. That's great. Nice. Plastic eggs with little marshmallows as passengers. Yeah, and that reminds us of an activity we were talking about earlier, um, touchdown, mm -hmm. where the idea is you're creating a, um, a, a capsule that won't spill out the, the marshmallows when it... Uh, mm -hmm. So any tips for doing this experiment inside if the weather is bad besides a ladder and a big tarp? Yeah, I would say a big tarp. Um, if you have a balcony, that's always a great option. Um, if you have a two-story library, or if you're friends with the maintenance guy and you, the librarian, um, can be the one to... Um, go up on a roof or something like that. Of course, you want to keep in mind safety, um, so not having everybody hovering around the, the landing area or anything like that. All right. All right. So I'm going to keep on going through the questions if you want to start unveiling them. I'll start unveiling. It doesn't smell like eggs. These are raw, by the way. Yeah. Good? I think it might I be. I think right? it is. I went, wait, no, I mean, we both win. <laughs> <laughs> wow, awesome. look at that. I'm going to do it again after this is over on the actual concrete, though, because I went in some bushes. I feel like it wasn't totally fair. Oh, yeah, geez. no, it wasn't. <laughs> All right, so we have one egg. Yes. I, I'm going to need, oh. <laughs> Anne's going to hold the little extra knots for us. <laughs> We'll keep them warm. <laughs> Here we go, one more. Thank you, Paula. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Connie, we just said we're just uh, opening them back up to see if they survived. Wow. Oh, oh a little crack. Oh. oh, no. But you actually hit the pavement. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> the pavement was not kind. This egg has cracked all to bits. Oh, poor astronaut. <laughs> so yeah, I guess this means I'm going to space and you're not going to space. So. Oh well, no, somebody's not coming back. <laughs> somebody's not coming back to this. Yeah. 
<laughs> Two bars, story time, shake your eggs for the indoor test. Oh, that's a great idea. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that must be, oh, I wonder if that's Paula's spoo. Yeah. That sounds like it. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, so just a few, uh, just to repeat, um, maybe try hard boiled eggs or a plastic egg when you're testing. You would go out and do that test and you could think, you know, you're not going to know whether the egg is going to split, but you could think or crack. Um, eh, that landed pretty hard or um, that that went really fast, so it probably had a lot of force when it landed um, and then test with the real raw eggs. But I, try, I was trying to think of a good way to add like a technical twist to this, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I guess just even just using a stopwatch. Um, or like filming, doing a slow-mo, right. if you had a camera with slow-mo imaging or whatever, mm. filming it as it hit to see where it hit and where you might want to reinforce or use a balloon or something like that. But Or doing a Zoom webinar on it. Or doing a Zoom <laughs> webinar on it, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so Deborah, you only have one story and no roof access. Yeah, you could partner with a local institution or you could throw it up. You could say, I have to, we have to, it has to go 10 feet in the air or something like that. Um, but yeah, I would recommend forming a partnership with a local, even if you're, neighborhood business right across the street has a roof or something like that and you could uh i don't know just form a partnership in some way and they're reinforcing what gail is, is saying that it's it's a great way to do it with the local fire department um that's that's how i how i've done the extranaut drop is with the fire department coming and the kids just love having their their creations be carried up the ladder by by firefighters and and um, just kind of add it to the appeal there yeah and then people driving by are like well, what are you doing and come in <laughs> that's true yeah and then cleanup's really easy with just with the hose <laughs> that's right. nice one. have a dance contest with a capsule yeah, attached sure. to your arms <laughs> a sumo contest right you could strap them and then oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. this is great so um, for all of you, I've mentioned this before, but if you have done these activities before that we showcased today and you have a, like a story to tell or feedback to give, please leave a review on the STEM activity clearinghouse. Um, that way, you know, when we're approaching 2019, other librarians logging on, seeing this activity can think, ooh, I'm gonna try it that way. I'm gonna call the fire department up or I'm gonna call our public works department up. Um, so just a good chance to share what's worked for you and what would work for other library staff. Yeah, I mean, you kind of have to let the kids play in the fire truck afterwards, right? You can't. Just not let them inside. And the grown-ups. And the grown-ups, yeah. Right? <laughs> All right, everybody. So, um, hey, Greg, would you mind go ahead and putting the certificate of attendance link in the chat box and the survey link? Um, when I close out of here, which we're going to do in just a second, you will be redirected uh, to the survey survey monkey link, um, or you should at least. Um, please take that. Give us some feedback. What we could improve, or if for some reason like Zoom was cutting out for you, let us know. We're always trying to evaluate our webinar software and all of the fun things that come with it. Um, and for the most part, um, I think that wraps up everything. Any final words, guys? Okay, keep engineering. Don't forget to redesign. Um, and we hope to see you around again. Look out for October, the week of the October 22nd. We'll be doing kind of a kickoff universe of stories, um, 2019 summer reading kind of idea. Did you remind people about the downlink? No, I didn't because I don't. Um, Anne has an Annie egg. Has an outfit, right? I also have an egg. Uh, so you guys probably got the email earlier today, but on October 18th, the High Plains Library District was selected to host a downlink from the International Space Station, talking to two astronauts up there. Um, so uh, all of that will be broadcast on NASA TV, and I'll be live streaming from Facebook all of the activities that we're doing. Um, so any of your locations are welcome uh, to join in for that. Uh, the other opportunity that we have for you all to participate um, is I believe by next Tuesday, I'm accepting questions to actually ask the astronauts. So one submission per library. Uh, so gather the kids at story time, ask them what they want to ask an astronaut, and maybe you'll hear your library mentioned. Um, a quick word of advice on the questions though, you can't ask the astronauts about pooping and peeing or their personal life, embarrassing or weird things like that, but any other question is totally fine. What's your favorite book? That's all acceptable. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, that's gonna be really exciting. October 18th, if you have questions about that, I just put Anne's email in the chat box, um, or if you just wanna bother her. Um, and if you uh, need the certificate of attendance or anything like that, you can email me um, as well. I'll go ahead and put that in there. Yes, Shauna, anyone who has access to NASA TV will be able to watch. Yeah, should be a lot of fun. Definitely. All right, we will see you all very, very soon. Um, happy fall to you and um, 
enjoy the cool weather as it comes in. All right, bye everybody. <laughs>